The services of all domestic staff, be it house help, drivers, gardeners, security men, and others, are quite important. But many homes have suffered one form of abuse or the other from especially house help. As experts say, profiling will help to ensure that those employed can be traced in case of any criminal act. These and other issues will be trashing out on this edition of Crime Watch. Hello and welcome to Crime Watch. I'm Ivy Kano, but first, crime news. The police council has confirmed the appointment of Muhammad Adamo as the inspector general of police. The event took place at the council chambers of the presidential villa in Abuja. Adamu's confirmation comes after he was appointed in acting capacity on the 15th of January 2019, when he took over from the former IGP Ibrahim Idris. The new IGP who spoke to newsmen immediately after his confirmation says the task of making the country crime-free is his priority. We provide uh, security within the country and make the country crime-free, which means we have to redouble our efforts Whatever strategy we put in place, we have to look at it and re-strategize day in, day out to make sure that the insecurity in the country is brought down to the barest minimum. few days after a video trending on social media showed an alleged attack on the students and staff of the community secondary school in River State, police is still investigating the report. Panic broke out at the school after grenade tear gas was mistakenly detonated within its premises. The children who sustained injuries in the incident are said to be recuperating. An SS2 student whose name I would not mention but was mentioned by the police um, uh, came, in, came in possession of that tear gas canister from his residence. He, uh, as, as, uh, as, as it turns out, he had an uncle who, uh, a, a former police officer, still had equipment or belongings of the Nigerian police in his residence. So that's what the police is saying, that um, this particular student came in contact with this um, tear gas canister, which belongs to his late uncle. The Lagos State Police commanders vowed to improve on the relatively low crime record in the state. The police has launched Operation Puff Ada with an order from the Inspector General of Police to search every part of the state and weed out criminals. It is aimed at dominating and claiming the public space from heinous criminals and criminal elements who are bent on threatening the nation's internal security order. The men are charged to ensure zero tolerance to all forms of criminality and deal decisively with criminal elements in Lagos State. Tough times indeed await those who choose the path of crime in Lagos State. We will take the battle to their doorsteps. Lagosians have a right to a more peaceful and orderly state. And with the support of the good people of Lagos State, we will rid the state of criminal elements. The kidnappers of a 30-year-old lady from the Plateau State Polytechnic Barking Ladi are demanding a 10 million naira ransom. She was abducted from the staff quarters of the secondary school. This is the third of such incidents in the Polytechnic this year. My sister was in the kitchen. She told me that I should, did I hear what is going on? I tell her yes. What was this? I said I kidnappers have come. She now see is it kidnappers yet? We are just sitting. They now carry one big stone like that. They hit the top first time. They now fall. The second one too. You know, for the fourth time, they now fall down. They now push it. We communicated with them. So when they were using a separate number, they now changed the number and told me that uh, I should give them ten million which I don't have, and I tell them that I'm struggling to get the money. They said it's already their work, and if we should not bring that money, they will condemn it. And if we can even involve a security, it's a risk. Our first story takes us to Kassina State, where police operation Puff Ada on criminal elements is beginning to yield positive results. Despite the increasing security challenges and tactical changes by the bandits in recent time, 
the Kazuna State Commander of the Police has been able to make major arrests linked with kidnapping and banditry. It is established a series of operations under the POF either launched by the Inspector General of Police is combating the rate of crime gradually. The State Police Commissioner Sanusi Buba is also of the view that for police to succeed fully, the citizens must assist in intelligence gathering. With the review of achievements of Operation Poof Ada, since its inauguration on the 10th April 2019 by the Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohammed Adamu Abubakar, MPM MNI. You will recall that during the inauguration program, the IGP mandated the operation to identify, engage, and arrest suspected bandits and recover their operational weapons. The operation, which comprises of IGP special attack forces, SARS patrol teams, counter-terrorism units, and police mobile force, conducted several sting operations at various locations in the state, hitting at the criminal dens and hideout of suspected bandits. The teams succeeded in arresting several criminal elements and recovered large catch of arms and ammunition, their operational motorcycles, food items, jerry cans loaded with fuel and other incriminating SBs. The police commissioner also gives account of the situation and arrest made, saying that the people must be extra vigilant in observing happenings around them. A total of 70 kidnapped suspects were arrested during the period under review by the operations. In addition, Operatives of the Operation Poof Ada recovered the following arms and ammunition and other incriminating SBs. AK-47 rifles, 43. Light assault rifles, LAR, 2. Travo 27 rifle, 1. English pistols, 2. Pump action rifles, 3. Locally made pistols, 7. Den guns, 19. 7.62 mm ammunition, 1,500. Cartridges, 200. Two axes, four knives. Motor vehicles, five. Motor tricycle, one. Motorcycles, 44. 25 liters of jerry cans loaded with petrol, 33. The command was able to arrest notorious syndicates of kidnappers who abducted the mother-in-law of Governor Amin Bella Masari, who was rescued by the police. Amidst this victory, another deadly attack was carried out at Ergamji village by the bandits in Bazari local government in Kasana state, leading to the killings of over 18 people. On our interview segment this week, we had a chat with a security practitioner to discuss the security implications of hiring a domestic staff. Hello and welcome to this segment of Crime Watch, our interview segment. We have joining us today a private security practitioner, Tony Ofoyeton, and we'll be looking at, um, you know, employment of domestic staff, those measures that should be taken before taking um, a domestic staff. Welcome to the program, sir. Is there a right way of employing a domestic staff? There are employment organizations. Um, those employment organizations are licensed by the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity. Now, what they do with that license is to employ domestic staff, employ um, informal staff like drivers, like um, your cook, your gardeners, and the like. Now, at times also contract staff in some other organizations. Now, the implication is that when you employ any staff through any of these organizations, accredited and registered organization, now it means that it depends on the arrangement. Some arrangement could be that you pay the salary of those staff directly to that company. Then the company in turn pays their own staff. In other words, it's their staff do working with you. Or alternatively, some could just be two, three months pay off for employing that person for you. 
Now, um, but having said so, it is one their responsibility to make sure that um, the bio data of the staff is um, correct and well verified in terms of the name, in terms of uh, the identity of the person, in terms of where the person stays, in terms of the nexus, people that are nexus to that person, then they are traceable and identifiable. You mean, you mean like guarantors? Like guarantors, shorties, and the like. Now, at the level of the employment bureau or the employment agency, such are done. Now, for individual too, it is also possible for individual on his own to scout for, since it's a domestic staff, one, two, thereabout, is still within the ambience of the law for you to have the power to employ one, two, three. I think maximum of five on your own. You know, so you can scout. In most cases, what happened here is that uh, you tell a friend that you need a houseboy or you tell a, you know, a neighbor around that you need a houseboy, a house girl, or call somebody that is going to Togo, that is going to Benin Republic to help you bring somebody. Now, they, are, they have agents like that, that does that. Now, that is an informal way of employing such people. And it has its own demerits. One of such demerits is that those set of people, one, don't stay with you for long. Secondly, they are purely into business. Not, they don't have any emotional attachment in any way whatsoever. The risk also, the security risk is also there. We've had of instances where some of them had to poison their principals. We've had of instances where they had to steal from their principal. We have of instances where they have to kidnap the children of the principal. Or where they have even have to, you know, give the children rubbish to eat. Let me just put the whole thing. Because some things are even unspeakable. Uh, either because they feel that the madam of the house maltreated them and all those. And some of them are basically there on mission to commit a crime. They move from one house to the other. They commit a crime here. They go back to the agent. The agent look for another um, principal. They go there, stay six months. After six months, they, they go. They, they, you know, they even change their names at some point. They change their names. The gold of the house, the valuables of the house disappears. Now, if you now say, let me go and hold the man that brought him. In most cases, the man is also incommunicado and has disappeared into thin air. So you also have syndicates that are involved in such things. And some of these syndicates are also so cruel to the extent that they are even involved in human parts harvest so and that is why you know many a times uh, it is always on the side of caution to avoid such channel the um, anti-trafficking law in nigeria now also condemns it in its totality anyway so which makes it easier um, in most cases now, that is why you hardly see the Benanians, the Togo, Lees, and all those stuff, unlike before. You can have five, anywhere. six of them <laughs> within one house and all those stuff like that. So for me, um, I think it is always better to go through the formal channel. I concede to the fact that the formal channel is more expensive. It's more expensive, but it's the safest way to go. Is the safest way to go. Yes, it's expensive. Because at the end of the day, you may see yourself paying a domestic staff as much as 50,000 naira per month. And out of that 50,000 naira, the agent is maybe giving the uh, domestic staff 40,000 or 35,000 naira. But you are paying the company 50,000 naira every month. But the truth is that there is a wire already. And that wire is to the extent that I mean, it doesn't even make any difference who they bring now. You have a dealing with the company. It's just like when you put a guard in a location. It, it is not the responsibility of the client company to begin to do background vetting on the guard. It is the responsibility of the guard company 
to vet its own guard before deployment. So the same thing with if you employ, you know, um, employment bureau, employment company to do that for you. You, you talked about risk. What are those risks? Now, the, the issue is the measures really does not prevent the crime. The measures only help you to know what has been done. CCTV camera, it reveals when the lady is putting poison in the food, when the lady is using urine to cook for you, when the lady is using her feces to make a bath for the children. It reveals when the lady is going to some places that she ought not to go or when she stole or committed a crime. That's all. You are able to see it. What if you did not see the lady or the man again? So the first thing is not the CCTV camera. CCTV camera is basically to dictate. It is not basically, you know, as in this instance. It doesn't deter a determined criminal. So what do you do? First, you want to employ a staff, and you know that for one reason or the other, you may not have the financial width to go the hurdle of a formal employment bureau. The number one thing is that whosoever you are going to bring to your house must be wired. Now, what do I mean by being wired? What it simply means is that the person that is bringing that person to you, you must know the person. And the person must know that person inside out. In other words, you are able to identify the actual truth about where the person is coming from in terms of state of origin, in terms of family background, in terms of places that that person has worked before, in terms of character, in terms of you know, behavioral attitude. Now, if those things are not established, no matter how dear you are in need of a house help, avoid it like a plague. What, 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 what would be your advice to those who would rather go the informal way? You know, um, is there any measures that they can put in place in their house? Security measures, I mean. The first advice is whosoever is going to be brought to your house must be through somebody you know. And that person must tell you that I know this person. That is the foundation. Secondly, you yourself must not be lazy. Get the whole particulars of the person. Have a food photograph. Let the person know that you are taking data of himself or herself. Let him know. Sit down. Take the picture of the person. Let the person do a bow, the bow print of the, on the back of the... Put your hand in the ink. Put it at the back of your passport photograph. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now you can even go to the extent of even asking the person to go and put up an undertaking in the police station. Now, but all the information that that person has given you, you must verify all. That is the most important thing. Physical verification, not electronic verification. You must verify all the information given you. The, the guarantor must be somebody credible and better than himself or herself. Just imagine a fellow house girl standing as a guarantor of another house girl or a fellow driver standing as a guarantor of another driver. That's an exercise in futility. You'd be surprised that some people actually go online to, to get some of these people. If you go online, to solicit for help, um, house help, domestic staff, be it driver, messenger, gardener, and the like, is as good as going to employ an arm robber by yourself, for yourself. It is an avoidable risk up initial that you intentionally took. There is no gainsay about it. As, as, um, High as the level of unemployment in Nigeria is, eh? anybody that volunteered to be a house help will not spend more than 48 hours to get a job. Once the neighbor around knows that 
he is or she is ready to be a true house help. Within that neighborhood, you will get people that will say, come. So it's not, you don't need to go online. But when you go online and you begin to scout for house help, you don't know, and they will tell you a lot of lies online. Ah. Uh, you remember the story of the woman that employed the house help online and the kids were kidnapped by that same house help. Three of them kidnapped by that same house in less than one month of employment. So, I mean, you don't need to go through that hardship yourself. You can learn from other people's mistakes. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of a special interview. Crime Watch continues. For our second big story, we'll be heading to Oshun State where a pastor was murdered in cold blood by suspected ritualists. Here is the lifeless and decomposing body of Emmanuel Ugedingbe. He came from Ibadan to Obaile in Oshun State with his friend Shola Adebayo on Sunday 5th of May to consult his herbalist as usual, Shina Adewi. His mission, according to the commission of police, was to perform rituals for the growth of his church in Ibadan. Unfortunately, Emmanuel Ugedingbe met his untimely death in the hands of the herbalist and his boys after becoming unconscious upon eating a concussion prepared for him. His head and some other parts of his body were immediately severed by the riverside where he was killed. The prime suspect and an ex-convict, Shina Adewi, who confessed to have known the pastor for the past seven years, denied ordering his boys to kill him, but to only escort him to the riverside where he would eat his concussion. I have known the pastor for quite some time. He has been coming to me for about several years for rituals to solve problems of his church members. At times, he will have bought all the necessary ingredients to be used along the way. My own is to prepare it for him. His wife knows me, and they usually come together to my house. A rather fortunate victim who had accompanied the pastor to the scene of the event narrated how he escaped being killed. Okada man come back. He now says I should enter the Okada. So I should go and do what he said I should do. Say, what do I tell you I want to do? I'm not doing anything. Pastor just tell me to escort him here. I'm not doing anything. He insisted. He took me to the Okada. We started going. When we are going, I stopped the Okada man on our way going there. I'm not going anywhere again. My mind is not going. Drop me. The bike man turned back. When we get to this man's house, the uh, Abadeh's house, he said, are you not going again? I said, I'm not going. I've told you before that I'm not going. I don't do such a thing. So he said, you must go. You just have to go in his seated. So he put me on a card a second time. Use this man to sit down with me, that he should follow me to that place. You go and pray for me that there is no any problem. I sit down again, going. When we are going with this old man, so when we move like three minutes, I hold the Okada man again, sir. Stop, man. I say I'm not going. I'm not. I, 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 I'm not here for that. I just uh, come with Pastor. I, I didn't. I have been calling the pastor. He didn't pick my phone. So that's why I run back. But before I will come back, the Abadis man collected my car key that will keep it for me. So when I come, I ask for my key. He said I couldn't collect the key. Now why? He said I should hold on. The commission of police assures that all the suspects, including Ahmed Omanla, now at large, will be arrested and prosecuted. They took it in in uh, stages. They first took. Um, Ogedengbe Emmanuel, after killing him, then they came back to pick Shola Adebayo. But the man sensed danger, so he, he ran away, he escaped. They took him in his vehicle to where they were supposed to kill him, but he escaped. So we have three of them here. About three of them we are still looking for. They are at large for now. Abiodun who appealed to youths to refrain from criminal activities 
assured residents that the police is ready to rid the state of criminals. I know that this incident must have happened around some people. If they notice something like this, they should please inform the police promptly. They should not hide, they should not hesitate in giving the police information. If they do so, the police will be able to nip crime in the board and it's going to help members of the public. According to findings, the suspect, Shina Adeoye, was said to have collected 800,000 naira from the victim. With that, we've come to the end of this week's edition. But before we go, remember to send your comments coming to crimewatch at tvcnews.tv. Do have a crime-free week. I'm Ivy Cano. <laughs>